Okay, Thursday nighter, 8.20 p.m. We're talking Atlanta Falcons at the Carolina Panthers. Atlanta 1-6, and 1-2 and two on the road at the Panthers. 75 Fahrenheit on Thursday night in Carolina. Showers, 12-mile-per-hour winds. This is the first week where I see a whole bunch of heavy winds. There's some cold. There's some rain in the forecast. Going to be very important for us to break down. Let's start with the Falcons. Mistakes all over the place ended up hurting the Falcons in their 23-22 loss at home to the Lions. All they had to do was kneel a couple times, hit a game-winning field goal. They're absolute idiots. And it's not that Gurley slipped in. It shouldn't even have got there. It shouldn't even have got to the one-yard line. I mean, who needs to be slapping people in the face around here? Because he's like, oh, I I slipped. I knew to hold up. Why are you even down at the one-yard line? It's just these are professionals – I don't know how they could be so stupid. It was uh, unheard of. I I just – just a pack of clowns. Now, it didn't matter to me. I I was going to lose the full game. I'm just blown away at these ass clowns making – these highly paid professionals making such dumb decisions. Ryan was 31 of 42 for 338 yards and a touchdown. Gurley went 23 of 63 for two TDs. Julio Jones, 8 for 97 Calvin Ridley, 5 for 69 in a TD. Hayden Hurst, 6 for 68. Now, uh, Julio Jones with the hip injury was limited during Monday's practice. I'm sure he's going to be good to go. Russell Gage with a knee injury. Center Alex Mack, offensive tackle Caleb McGarry, and defensive end Tack McKinley are all listed as questionable. In Sunday's 27-24 loss at New Orleans. Uh, sorry, let me move this. Uh, in this loss at New Orleans, I – I was watching that game in the first half, and I knew I knew I was going to cash the Panthers plus seven, and I knew I was going to cash the over, and I and the over ended up pushing. The Saints scored on five of their first six drives, converted 12 of 14 third down opportunities, and yet the Panthers were still in the game. Uh, the Saints held a nine-minute edge in time of possession. The Saints never punted, and the Panthers were right there. In the first half, the Saints were six and six for six on third down and three for three in the red zone. So why is that happening? Uh, Carolina lost two-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle and co-captain Quan Short, season-ending shoulder injury. Defensive end Yuder gross Matos, ankle injury. Safety Justin Burris, rib injury. They're all on the short-term injured reserve. They put cornerback Rasul Douglas on COVID-19 reserve. So that's four starters out. And then their top quarter- cornerback, Dante Jackson, has been in and out of the lineup. The Panthers are tied for last in the league with just six sacks. Uh, I could talk more about their offense. I've been talking too long. I want to send it over to Bebenek here, but – the Saints, without their two best receivers, were able to abuse Carolina. Why won't the Falcons be able to abuse Carolina as well? Bebzy, let me just give you the market here. Panthers open up at minus three. Now they're two and a half. This total has dropped two and a half points from 51 and a half to 49. Uh, thanks, Jimmy. Look, yeah, everything to me in this game screams Falcons. Uh, I'm ignoring records here. And it's more – it's almost like a gut thing. I just feel like this is the week it's, – it's not like the, this is the week the Falcons turn around their season. It's They had an ugly loss this, this past week. I really just feel they go into Carolina and get it done this week. You know, that said, Carolina, I think, is the all-around better football team. They're currently better coached. They're a little more well-rounded. They are at home. So logic says Carolina should take this game, but I, I really just believe that the Falcons are gonna, they're gonna come out in this one and they're gonna take care of business. I just logic says Carolina. My gut screams Falcons. I just really think they they clean up this ugly mess of last week and for you no know, large in part their entire season. I think they just get it done this week. I think this is a divisional upset. Uh, my gut says Falcons. You've not made a bet on a Thursday night yet this season. So Thursday night football, I want it abolished. But this might be a spot. Let's talk about the Panthers. I And what do you think about McCaffrey? Because we have Matt Rule saying that he's hopeful. I have to see how he responds to today. It was great having him out there. He was on the practice field today. He said, I will say he looks good. He looks like he's moving around great. Just we'll let the medical people and him determine how much he can do or when he can play a game. Is This is a point where we should probably wait 
because if they announce that McCaffrey's in the lineup, there's going to be money that's going to come in on the Panthers. If you look at what Mike Davis did, he came crashing back to earth last game. Seven rushes for 12 yards, five catches for 24 yards. They got Curtis Samuel back. That was a big help. But right now, Eli Apple hamstring, defensive tackle Zach Kirk, toe, left tackle Eli Russell. Eli Apple has been released. Yeah. Say what, my man? Eli Apple has been released. Eli Apple has been released. Okay, thank you for sharing that. I At this point, Let's talk about two things. Well, first off, do you think this Panthers defense is very vulnerable after watching what the Saints did to it without their two best receivers? Sure, but we've talked about this from the start of the year. This is a vulnerable Panthers defense. I think they've outplayed their skill set. And, and now with, with the injuries piling up, it's, it's really starting to show. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're susceptible to any sort of aerial attack. But – on the other side of the ball, is Julio healthy? I saw him limping around at the end of last game. I, I haven't really checked back in, but, I mean, injuries are seemingly becoming a problem across the entire NFL. But, yeah, they're they're for sure in trouble, especially with losing short for a – did you say the season or short-term IR? Uh, he's done. Season-ending shoulder injury. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a big blow. I, I don't think he's the best defensive player on that team, but but that hurts a lot. I, it's just. It's also. You know, I say this week after week. I hate Thursday night football. I'm not interested in Thursday night football. It's home. It's home team or no team. I do believe that if McCaffrey comes back you know, now, one of the things that his injury did is allow them to expand that offense outside of giving McCaffrey the ball every second play. So I'd like to think that even if they do bring him back, which I believe is if they play him this week, it's a mistake. If he's not ready, just rest him. It's not that important that he plays this week. But if they do bring him back, I think that offense will be better having played without him because they know what else they can do. Okay, two important things are coming up here. The first is what Slats is saying. Slats says, cannot put money on the Falcons, most inept team in the NFL. They will always find a way to lose. Not wrong. Secondly, we have our man Nutflush Island talking about the team total for these Falcons. It's at 23 and a half, and that may be a better way to go here. It's just take the Falcons team total over 23 and a half. And the very important situation here is what our man Intex is saying, who will be live at the Breeders' Cup. He is saying that primetime unders are now 16 and 6 on the season, hitting at 73%. Do you believe that primetime games, do you trust this trend of primetime games going always always going under? Here's the problem with trends, is trends suggest that it can't go the other way. Like when, you know, somebody says, oh, this team beat this team 25 times in a row. Well, it suggests they'll never, ever beat them again, which we all know can happen. So if you – if you just bet blindly on that, then I think that's lazy betting, personally. And, you know, sure, the odds are in your favor, but those odds uh, have already happened, and it doesn't have any bearing on what happens in the next game. Oh, I agree. I agree. All right, well, it's time to make some decisions. Time to make some decisions. Let's take a look at where the money has gone so far. If, if I'm supposed to believe what this site is saying, it's saying that, over 90% of the cash is on the over. Over 90% of the tickets are on the over, and yet it's dropped two and a half points. I, I find that very difficult to what believe. What are you doing for an over in this? Uh, this over has dropped, and right now, right now it is 49 across the board. The first 48 and a half has just shown up. I mean, my instinct is – to lean under, but with the injuries of the defense of Carolina and the ability of both these teams to put up points, uh, it suggests otherwise. But, yeah, short week, uh, I don't know. I, I fucking hate Thursday night football. Thursday night football sucks. It's just a, it's an inferior product. And that's why, yeah, I, you know what, I lean under. Uh, well, I tell you what, I think that McCaffrey will be playing in this game. And I think when he's announced, those threes get back on the board, maybe even three and a halves. What do you think of that? 
I don't think him coming back will be this incredible ceremonious lift to the team. Uh, so if that changes, if he comes back and it and it you think it'll move you think it'll move a full two points or just one? I think it'll move a half point for sure to the three. And then could public push it over to three and a half? I think it's possible. So a half point for sure, maybe a full point. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I still don't even know if that would excite me too much about a, a Thursday night matchup. And I, I forget who said it. It you, you can't you can't really back the Falcons right now. They've been atrocious. I thought we snuck one out with the first half, and that was a half a point last week. Yeah, we were we were fortunate. I mean, it was you know we got the last fourteen points of the half, right? We were fortunate. Okay, uh, my plan is this: I don't want I don't want to be sitting here on Thursday night with the bet on the Falcons. But if I am going to, I'm going to wait. And I'm going to wait until McCaffrey's announced in, and then I'm going to get at least a three or three and a half. That's my plan. I don't want anything to do with this total. I can understand that the trend of this going under is is not just this year. I mean, we've had primetime games going under for a few years, and that that's why it's bet down to 49. And I don't want with the Panthers' defense and the fact that if the Falcons do get a couple early scores, the Panthers are going to start airing it out. I don't want to be on the under. So I, at this – oh, say what, Desi? I was just going to say, I'd be curious to see what uh, exactly the the under – the record is for the under hitting on Thursday night because Thursday night is similar to my philosophy for the start of the year with unders is when you have less time to prepare, it always favors the defense because the defense – they have their sets with the offense. You know, they have, they have to get new plays and they have to get time again. It's it's more – the offense always needs more preparation. So I'd be curious to see what that, the record is on, on Thursday's hitting unders. But Well, uh, I'll get – I'll ask – I'll ask Al Mack or maybe Intex has that in front of him. All right, there you go. Game on Thursday night, 8, 20 p.m. Eastern. We have no move – from Bebzy, the trend of no bets on Thursday nights is still strong. Is that confirmed? No bet for you? No bet for me. At this point, it's almost me protesting Thursday night football. And I want McCaffrey to be announced, and then I want to bet the Falcons. That's my plan. All right, there you have it. There is the Thursday night action. Let's move on to Sunday. Now, we're going to go down the rotation order the rotation numbers so it's going to be very easy for anyone to follow we'll do the rotation numbers from now on 